Okay, the last important piece of polarization optics that I want to talk about um, is something called an electro-optic modulator. So these are um, pretty much universal in time domain thermoreflectance systems and they're really essentially a polarization optic. Um, in this unit I'm going to go into a significant amount of detail as to how this thing works because um, some of the math I'm going to go through um, is helpful for if you ever have to choose out an electro-optic modulator for your time domain thermoreflectance system. Okay, so what is an electro-optic modulator? Well, um, let me not talk about the exact physics quite yet, but um, basically what it does is it's an electronically actuated half-wave plate polarizing beam splitter combo, meaning that it turns the laser on and off or to anywhere in between, um, you know, but instead of doing it where you're, you know, turning a birefringent crystal by hand, you're going to change a birefringence, change the level of birefringence of a crystal using an electric field. Or in other words, I'm gonna apply a voltage that changes the level of birefringence of a crystal and I'm going to use that to change the transmitted laser power. Um, that's basically what it does. Um, in time domain thermoreflectance, when we're all said and done, um, what it basically does is we're gonna turn on and off transmission of a laser very quickly. Um, so depending on how these things are designed, it's usually typical to get performances of up to maybe about a 10, 10 to, uh, or about a 20 to 30 megahertz um, speed, um, you can turn on and off um, this electro-optic modulator's transmission. Um, so, let me see what the next slide is real fast. Yeah, so, okay, let me talk a little bit more. So, these things require, so, basically what you're doing, so the sketch in the box here has a basic idea of what you're doing. Um, so, you are sending in through light um, of a particular polarization and it's designed to um, similar to the Faraday isolator this thing's designed that under most conditions if you're not applying a voltage or you're not applying a, a large voltage what it does is it will for example um, change the polarization of light by let's say 90 degrees and then a um, polarizing beam splitter will exist or a polarizer will exist at the output um, that will generally allow transmission um, if you haven't applied a voltage to your crystal. Now what happens is when you apply a voltage across this um, box that's over here, this crystal, what it does is it makes one, of, because the electric field is only applied in one direction of the crystal, what it does is it cr creates a birefringent effect where then you know, for example, the axis that you apply the electric field to will now have a different speed of light than the other direction. And so that creates a phase shift between the, the, uh, the two polarizations of incoming light. So now instead of um, rotating the polarization by let's say 90 degrees, you'll rotate it by some other amount. And um, then when you go to put it through the polarizer, you know, some portion of that gets rejected and some portion gets transmitted. But in general, like the amount that gets transmitted will change as I apply this electric, this voltage or electric field across the crystal. And then, you know, if I apply that electric field or if I change the voltage very quickly, I can change the amount of transmission very quickly. Um, and so that's essentially how an electro-optic modulator works. The mechanism of the birefringence is um, typically, um, oh, what do they call it? It's like, it's a piezo action where you apply an electric field and the unit cell of the, whatever the crystal is, will actually distort, which is what physically changes the speed of light. But from a user's point of view, I guess the bottom line is that you apply an electric field, the speed of light changes along the direction of the, uh, the electric field. Now, it takes a really large electric field to make this happen. And so, um, you know, you're talking about, you know, kilovolts per meter kind of stuff, and or hundreds of kilovolts per meter kind of stuff. So in practice, um, what it means is that, you know, you typically need hundreds of volts to be applied over the length of, over the size of one of these crystals. 
And so um, you need to buy very, you need to buy special amplifiers um, that can actually create these kind of voltage at those kinds of speeds. Um, and I'll talk about typical vendors for that kind of thing, but, um, but that's the basic idea behind the op operation of an electro-optic modulator. Um, let me go into a little bit more detail about that. So um, again, a, um, you're applying an electric voltage um, that is basically creating a phase shift for the light, a, a relative phase shift between you know, the two polarizations, S and P. When you phase shift them by, or when you phase shift one of the polarizations by um, 180 degrees, that basically flips the pol that essentially flips the polarization of let's say the s the the slow axis, and um, creates that's essentially what creates the um, the polarization rotation effect. And so when you, um, the maximum that you would want to rotate it is by um, a phase um, pi. So that would be 180 degrees um, change in the, uh, what do you call it, the polarization, which would basically be uh, the difference between on and off if you were going into a polarizing beam splitter. Um, so... They call that, so for a polarizing beam splitter, the voltage that accomplishes a 180 degree shift um, is called um, V pi or the, um, half, the half wave voltage. That's a characteristic of both the size of the crystal and the type of crystal and the wavelength that you use. Um, when you purchase from a vendor, they'll typically tell you what that half wave voltage is. But it's typically measured in hundreds of volts. Um, now, the way that, you know, if you go through the mathematics of like how much, you know, you're changing the polarization and the way all of these polarizers set up, what you'll find out is that the transmission coefficient for this electro-optic modulator goes as sine squared um, of pi over 2 times the relative ratio of the applied voltage, so that's V in this numerator, to the half wave voltage. Um, let me see if I can, g I'll give you a numerical example of how big that is. But, um, you know, typically the way that this work is, works if you're trying to turn on and off an electro-optic modulator is that you've got some change in voltage that you're applying, so between some high voltage and a low voltage. So at a low voltage, you'll get, for example, a low transmission coefficient, and at a high voltage, you'll get a high transmission coefficient. Um, how big that is depends on what the crystal is, what the wavelength is, and, you know, how much voltage you apply. Um, so let's actually go through, and I'm going to go through a fairly detailed example here of a real system that's often used in time domain thermoreflectance. This is just so that you understand exactly how this works. Um, so our goal here is to take a laser beam, um, a, a polarized, a linearly polarized laser beam, and turn it on and off at a frequency of 10 megahertz. How exactly are we going to do this? So I'm going to talk about some real optics here. So a common choice, if you're working with a titanium sapphire laser at 785 nanometers or somewhere around there, is Canoptics model um, 350, 160. Um, there are electro-optic modulators, a very common one. They have different drivers you can use, but um, another, again, another common choice is the Canoptics 25D voltage, uh, you know, high voltage amplifier. Um, and typically the way so again, so what's going to happen here is that the electro-optic modulator requires a, a voltage, a large voltage, in order to change the phase and turn it off, itself on and off. So this, this Canoptics 25D amplifier will do that. It will take an input voltage from a function generator. Um, so you can use any function generator you want, but an example is the DS35 um, from SRS. Um, that, um, for example, will generate a voltage signal that goes from zero volt to one volt, right? So this thing will provide zero to one volts um, at our oscillation speed. So essentially, like, it'll be one volt for some period of time, and then it'll go to zero volts for some period of time, and it'll, re and it'll repeat all that at a speed of 10 megahertz. So that's a square wave at 10 megahertz. 
the amplifier will physically amplify that. So instead of being a zero to one volt signal, we'll now have a zero volt to some very large voltage, somewhere around, let's say 200 volts at um, 10 megahertz. And then what the EOM does is it takes that zero volt to high voltage and it turns that into on. So when the voltage is high, the transmission is on, so it'll be maximum transmission. And when the voltage is in the low portion of the phase, it'll be off. So you go from, you know, at one end, a function generator that's zero volts to one volt, and at the other end, light transmits or does not transmit. Now, if you go to Canoptic's website, or this, this would apply generally to anybody who provides your electro-optic modulator, but for that specific model, for the model 35160 EOM, you go to Canoptic's website, I've got the link down there, and they'll give you a set of specs. Um, so for this particular thing, it um, has an aperture, so like the hole in the middle of the EOM, um, that allows the uh, light to go through has a diameter of 2.7 millimeters. So as long as your laser beam is smaller than that, it'll go through. Um, but there are a couple of important specs here I want you to take a look at. They've got a list. Um, so one important specification is the half wave voltage. So that was the thing that applied, that was sitting in our equation here. So this half wave voltage is an important spec because it, what it basically means is how much voltage would I need to apply to go from zero volts to full, or sorry, from zero transmission to 100% transmission. So how big is that half wave voltage? So according to Canoptics for this particular model at this particular wavelength, so if you're working near 800 nanometers, you would typically use this wavelength. So um, at that particular wavelength, the half wave voltage is 216 volts. Great, so if my amplifier sends 216 volts, I should get maximum transmission. When the transmission, uh, when the driving amplifier sends zero volts, I'll get minimum transmission. Okay, so let's talk a little bit more about that. Um, okay. So now let's go and look at our amplifier. So I said I was gonna use this 225D uh, voltage amplifier and uh-oh, uh, -oh, um, it can only apply a maximum voltage of 175 volts. But wait a minute, I need 216 volts to turn the thing fully on and off, All right? So what am I gonna do about that? Okay, so, oh, and by the way, note that um, like for example, these amplifiers have a particular bandwidth. Um, so for this 25D, you can either, you can apply anything up to 30 megahertz, but it can't respond to any like switching that's happening faster than 30 megahertz. Um, if you want something faster than that, you need to buy a special amplifier and you need to buy a special um, EOM typically. Um, so yeah, okay. So the amplifier can't produce a voltage as high as the half wave voltage. So What's gonna happen here? Okay, so let me look at my transmission curve. So according to our curve, the transmission percentage goes as sine square, the transmission is sine squared um, of pi over two times V, the applied voltage divided by the half wave voltage that you would need. Um, so our half wave voltage is 216 volts, but our applied voltage can only be up to 175 volts. So if I you know, calculate what that is, that's only 0.91, meaning I'm gonna get 90, under these conditions, I can only get up to 91% transmission of our um, laser beam. But wait, it gets worse than that because the maximum transmission um, through, through our um, EOM is actually only 90% which means, you know, and, and by the way, that 90% that's up, you know, in this highlighted bit, that 90% comes from the fact that, you know, there are, you know, maybe something like five or six reflections that are happening inside this electro-optic modulator, and each one of those has some loss associated with it, even if our electronics are set up to have maximum transmission. So um, because of all of those kind of reflective losses in things, um, actually, even in a best case scenario, you'd only get 90% transmission. 
So what I have to do is I have to take this 0.91, you know, fraction and multiply that by the 90% transmission. So the actual peak transmission when my voltage amplifier is turned all the way to high is only 82% transmission. So, you know, even when everything's working properly, that's all you can ever expect to get. Okay, so again, this is how this is just going, but this is exactly how it's going to work. So um, when the high voltage amplifier sends in zero volts, I'll get zero transmission. Um, oh, wait a minute, do I get zero transmission? Um, well, it says the contrast ratio, so this is the specification for our electro-optic modulator. It says the contrast ratio is 500 to 1. Um, what does that mean? That means that the ratio of the maximum power to the minimum power transmitted is typically only 500 to 1. Um, what that means is I can't actually turn this thing the whole way off. Um, why does that happen? Typically it's because the, I think the angles of the polarizing beam splitters are not usually set 100% correctly. Um, or And also the polarizing beam splitters are not 100% um, accurate in terms of being able to separate P from S polarized light. So whatever the reasons, the actual ratio of maximum to minimum is typically only 500 to 1. That means that I can never actually have a lower transmission than 0 0.002 in this case, or 1 over 500. So that means that, okay, let's go back. Boom, boom. Boom. So um, I'm gonna so I'm gonna use my function generator to send a voltage from zero to one volts at 10 megahertz. My amplifier says it can actually amplify them to be between zero to 175 volts. I'm going to feed that into my electro-optic modulator, whose performance is such that you know when I send in zero volts, when I you know during the portions of this cycle that I'm sending in zero volts. Um, I'm actually going to get a transmission of 0 0.002 and when I'm in the portion of this cycle where I'm sending 175 volts, I'm actually going to get a transmission of 82% or 0.82 as a fraction. And so, um, for example, if I am sending in a laser beam that initially has 100 milliwatts of power, so this would be pretty typical I would say, so if I send in 100 milliwatts of laser power, um, into an electro-optic modulator, what comes out the other side is a laser beam that, um, when it's on, um, is transmitting 82 milliwatts of power, and when it's off is transmitting 0.2 milliwatts of power, and that, basically that transmission, or the transmission of from 82 to 0.2, is going to happen at a speed of 10 megahertz. That is basically how an electro how the electro optic modulator works on a time domain thermoreflectance system. So, um, if you want more information, I would recommend. So, Canoptics is a very common dealer um, of these electro optic modulators. Go to their website and um, check out some of the options, that, different options they have um, for electro optic modulators and the amplifiers. Um, so. You'll see that um, they make different amplifiers that, so the, the, the D in 25D that's in the voltage amplifier stands for digital, meaning that this is a type of amplifier that likes to either be on or off. So it likes to do square waves. Um, so like it switches much faster when you're, and much more cleanly when you're supplying square waves. Um, they sell another version that's actually significantly cheaper called the Canoptics 25A voltage amplifier that is very similar. Um, the only difference is that you can supply a sine wave or any arbitrary wave from your function generator. It doesn't have to be a square wave. Um, I believe it has a slightly smaller bandwidth, but both of the bandwidths are big enough to use with time domain thermoreflectance. And so the 25A voltage amplifier is a very common choice for time domain thermoreflectance. Um, practitioners. Um, as far as the actual electro-optic modulator goes, so the piece that has the piezo crystal in it, um, the actual, often for um, people using titanium sapphire crystals, they will use the model that I've given here because the other models um, have even larger half-wave voltages. Why do I need a, uh, I would like to have a small half-wave voltage. Why? Um, well, it comes down to this transmission um, calculation. 
So if I have a small half wave voltage, then I can use a small driving amplitude to get 100% transmission. If the half wave voltage is really large, so like let's say the half wave voltage was like, I don't know, 300 volts, but I could only apply 175 volts, then I could basically only turn the amplifier, I could only transmit at most half of the light. And so there's a pretty steep cost um, to using an electro-optic modulator that has a um, large half-wave voltage. So that is why um, things work the way they do. All right, so that's the conclusion of my polarizing optics tutorial for um, time domain thermal reflectance. Uh, there may be other things that come up, and if so, I'll add them as separate videos.